Hi, so in this video I'm going to show you how to remotely control Cubase with the Avid Control app on your mobile phone or tablet totally for free. So let's go. So I don't know how it is for you, but for me, I sometimes have a situation in which I want to record myself and I'm not here right at my desk with the keyboard and mouse in front of me. For example, I might want to record a background vocal in that vocal booth down there, or even record an acoustic guitar in there because it's more quiet and more shielded from the noise from outside through those windows. So in that case, it's really nice and handy to have something that you can remotely control Cubase with, like start and stop recording, maybe be able to turn certain channels up or down, and basically quite simple things like that. Now, many moons ago, I actually bought a separate piece of hardware for this. Anybody remember this? This is the Transport by Frontier, and it had some very basic controls, a nice jog and shuttle wheel, stop, play, record. It had a two-line LCD display, which showed some basic information from the track that you were navigating on. And it worked quite well actually. But next up, we all got smartphones with very nice displays on them, or maybe even a tablet. And Steinberg released the Cubase IC Pro app. Let's have a look at that app in the App Store. There you go, quite a nice project view. Also play, chord buttons, some fader controls, and it cost $17. So I bought and used that at the time, but I recently went back to it to again try to remotely control Cubase again. And let me show you what happened. So you're looking at a nice application on my PC on which I can share my iPhone screen. And let's now navigate to the Cubase RC Pro app. And basically this is the state of the Cubase RC Pro app. So it seems to be broken. Now if you take a look at the Steinberg forums, there are quite a lot of posts about it. And this is one of the more recent ones in which somebody remarked that the app is still broken after quite a long time. So I'm not sure how much I could count on Steinberg to fix this app shortly. Furthermore, if you look at the reviews on the App Store, you can see that the rating is not that high. And even many years ago, people were complaining about the fact that the app needs updating, that it's not working correctly, and that it's a bit of a struggle to get it going. Now, in the same forum post that I just showed you, somebody was also talking about the fact that Avid has an app that is usable for Cubase to remotely control it. And that is the Avid Control app. It's available for both iPhone and iPad. Looks quite promising from the screenshots. So I decided to check it out. And yes, it's also available for Android in the Google Play Store. So let's see how to get this working with Cubase. So on the iPhone, if you navigate to the App Store, and then you can go to Avid Control. You can see the Avid Control app here. And I downloaded it before, so I'll do it again now. And if I initially open the app, I will allow it to find devices on the local network and I can push get started, after which I have to enter the login for my Avid account. Now I don't typically use Avid software, but I want to test it Pro Tools first. So that's why I already have an Avid account. But if you don't have an Avid account, you can register one for free. So after you have an account, you should log in on the app, push continue. And the app will basically open without showing you anything yet. And that is because you also have to install software on your PC to be able to connect the app to Cubase. So let's have a look at that. Because after I registered my product by logging in, I got an email from Avid with a link to download software. And if you click on that one, I unfortunately got this page not found error. I'm not sure what's wrong there, but obviously it's a link that shows you how to download software to install on your PC or Mac. And you can also get that from your Avid account. Because when you log into the created Avid account and you go to the main screen, you might be able to find it under view my product, but I wasn't able to. So in that case, you can go to the Avid download center. You can scroll down to EU control and download the latest version of the Yukon unified installer for your platform. Now, after downloading and unzipping that one, I got uh, this file, which lets you install the Yukon software. And there's lots of options to install, but what you need in this case is the option which is necessary for Avid Control, and that's the top one. Now, I already did that, as you see, so I will now cancel the installation, but you have to obviously continue it and go through it if you want this software to be installed. Now, after software installation, you get this little icon here in your taskbar, and you can double click it for setup and then you get this setup dialog and over here it detected that I have an Avid control running on my phone and I can add it as a control service. So now the app on my phone can talk to my PC but now we still have to make sure that Cubase knows that it needs to be controlled by this software as well. And I'll show you the phone on the right side here and in Cubase you go to studio, studio setup, 
click add device and you click Yukon here. Okay. And after I restarted the Yukon application, the app started showing this mixer view over here, which is the mixer view for the project that I have loaded in Cubase here. Now at this point, if you like this video or find it useful, please give it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and if you want to know when I post another video, you can ring the little bell icon. You can also support the channel by obviously watching more videos, using the super thanks button below the video, or using any of the affiliate links also in the description in case you want to buy anything at any of the stores. And I have affiliate links for Amazon, Toman, Bax Music, and Sweetwater. So you can take your pick. I get a small percentage without any extra cost to you if you buy after clicking one of those links. Highly appreciate it. But let's get back to the app and see how it can control Cubase. Now obviously the iPhone display is a bit small, although it is workable, but I hope you can also discern it in my screen sharing app because I had to set it to a size so that it actually fits on the screen, but it's more clear on the iPhone and on the iPad there will obviously be even more room to show the controls. So the app opens on the mixer page and you have transport controls at the bottom. So for example, you can play. Stop. Fast forward, return back to the beginning. And if we add a track and arm it for recording, which we can also do in the app, I can start recording in Cubase and it will now basically record my voice. And I can disarm recording again. And yes, you can of course also adjust the mixer channels. I'm now moving the fader in the app. And you see that it's also moving in Cubase. And I can, for example, also change the pan position and you see that it's also moving in Cubase. Double click resets it to zero. And if there were more mixer channels in this project, I could scroll left and right in this mixer view to move to the other channels. Now up on top in the app, below what's now showing the locate position, 61319. We're now in the mixer view. You can also switch to the track view, which allows you to see all the tracks and in a way that they fit better on the screen. Next up is the channel view, which gives you access to a lot of the standard controls that you have for each channel, for example, pan controls, but even the EQ. If I go to the mixer view in Cubase, you can see, for example, that if I select the base DI channel, turn on the EQ in the app, I can basically control the EQ in Cubase. But I have to admit the controls in the app are quite small. So you have to have small fingers to be able to push them. Let's turn it off again. Moving on, there's also a meter section that you can use the meters. Now there's a monitor section which should give you access to some of the control room functionality, but more interesting is maybe the soft key section, which has many, many pages, but it does give you quite a lot of options. For example, you can save the project, undo your last action, add a track. I do have to say that sometimes when you push some of these soft keys, there's a dialogue that comes up in Cubase and then you will not be able to fill it out in the app. So you still need to go to Cubase to actually use it. But some of the more interesting controls are for navigation, which are on page three, which for example, allow you to go to your previous locator position. And let me switch back to the project view so you can see that. Yeah, so this allows you to go to the various locators that I have in my marker track. So I'm now pressing locate previous marker and locate next marker in the app. And this way, when you're in the vocal booth, for example, you can easily navigate to the section that you want to start your recording on. Now I have to say, I haven't used this app for very long yet. I only just discovered it. But so far what I've seen from it is that it works quite reliably. I think the EU control software is basically the software that is also used to control your door with much larger control surfaces. So that's probably well tested by now. And the app itself has many more options that I've been able to figure out so far. But a couple of the things that I noticed so far, which you may see as a disadvantage is that Cubase must stay in focus. For example, if I click on my little screen sharing app here, the connection to Cubase seems gone. And if I click on Cubase again, then the connection to Cubase will come back in the app. When you have many channels in your project, you can navigate left and right on the mixer view. And there's a bit of lag with showing the meters. So you first need to move to the next part of your mixer and only then the meters will show up and start showing you the level of the audio on those tracks. And another thing that I kind of miss in this app is a project view so that you're able to see more easily where you're exactly at in your project. But right now, it definitely works better than the Cubase IC Pro app. 
So if you are looking for a cheap way to remotely control Cubase, I would say go and try this app and let me know in the comments what your experiences are. Or if you've already tried this app, also let me know the pros and cons. Now, if you like these kinds of videos about Cubase and audio engineering, then you should definitely check out this video on this channel because YouTube has selected it specifically for you. So have a look, enjoy, and see you soon. Mm -hmm.